coming from Galilee. In the New Testament, Galilee, a despised region, signifies rejection. Jesus did not come from Bethlehem because at that time Bethlehem was a place of honor and welcome. If you came out of Bethlehem, everyone would honor you and give you a warm welcome. But if you came from Galilee, everyone would despise you and reject you. Jesus came from such a despised and rejected place. This place was not rejected by God, but it was rejected by religion and culture. All those who come to the Lord's recovery do not come from Bethlehem, rather they come from Galilee. Do not try to come from a place of honor and warm welcome, but come from a place that is despised and rejected by religion and culture. Even if the president of a nation took the way of the church, he would also have to be one coming from Galilee to the Jordan. Throughout my years of watching and observing, I have seen that those of a high rank who turned to the way of the church were despised and rejected by today's religion and culture. I am quite certain that if you are still honored and welcomed by today's religion and culture, you are not on the way from Galilee to the Jordan. The way from Galilee to the Jordan is the correct way for the church. The way of today's church life is not from Bethlehem to Jerusalem. It is from Galilee to the Jordan. The way of the church is a narrow way. Even if there were no opposition to the Lord's recovery, but rather a high appraiser from every Christian organization, the number of those who would turn to the way of the church would still be about the same as it is today, simply because the way of the church is a narrow way. When some consider the church, they may say, "This is the kingdom of the heavens." Certainly, this way must be very high. Although this way is high, it is not high according to your concept. Instead, it is a highway from Galilee to the Jordan. Coming to Jordan, as we have pointed out, Jordan was a place of barrier and resurrection. Thus, Jordan signifies termination and germination. The children of Israel traveled through the wilderness for about forty years, and eventually they were all buried in the Jordan River. Hence, the Jordan terminated them. Ended their history of wandering in the wilderness, and terminated the age of wandering. But the Jordan also gave them a new beginning, for it germinated them and ushered them into a new age. It was the Jordan that brought the children of Israel out of the wilderness and into the good land, which is Christ. This is the significance of the Jordan. In the church life, our way today is the way from Galilee to the Jordan, the way from rejection to termination and resurrection. We all need to say to those who despise and reject us, "Farewell! I shall not seek to be welcomed by you. I am going to a, the place where I can be terminated and germinated." In the church life, there is no honor; instead, there is termination. Day by day, we are terminated. In the church, we have a mutual termination. We terminate one another every day, even every hour. But it is a good thing to be terminated. Termination is not the end; it is the beginning, because termination always leads to germination. Therefore, we can testify that every termination becomes a germination. Sometimes the sisters say, "Brother Lee, the church life is wonderful, but it is often difficult for us sisters. We know that the brothers are the head, and that we sisters must submit to them. The brothers are good, but they are stro- too strong. We just cannot take it. Many times they have nearly killed us. Whenever I hear this, I say, 'Isn't that good? How good it is to be terminated!'" Isn't it good for the sisters to be killed by the brothers? A few years ago, I was invited to a certain church. The brothers there told me that the sisters were so emotionally and opinionated that they found it very difficult to have fellowship with them. They simply did not know how to handle the situation. Several days later, some of the 
very sisters in question invited me to lunch. Their purpose in doing so was to have an opportunity to express their opinion. They told me their patience and was exhausted because the brothers were so strong. They wanted me to give them the way to go on. Several days earlier, I had been pressed by the brothers, but now I was being pressed by the sisters. I saw what a serious and terrible termination that was for both the brothers and the sisters. Both the brothers and the sisters were being terminated, but that mutual termination is very positive. Do you not love to be terminated? If you have never been terminated in the church life, get yourself prepared. I can assure you that in the church life, we all shall be terminated because we are on the way from Galilee to the Jordan. When new ones come into the church life, they may say, Hallelujah, I have seen the church life. How wonderful. When I hear this, I say we did. Yes, it is wonderful, but wait a while. Sooner or later, this wonderful church life will terminate you. In the church life, I have been terminated dozens of times. I have experienced at least 10 major terminations. I was terminated in Chefu, Shanghai, Taipei, Manila, Los Angeles, and Anaheim. The marvelous church life is surely a terminating life. The wonderful church life terminates us all. Be prepared to be terminated. Those who have been in the church life for just a short time are probably still on their church honeymoon. The honeymoon is fine, but as every married couple knows, the honeymoon eventually turns into termination. Nearly every husband has terminated his wife, and every wife has terminated her husband. But this termination is very positive because it brings in germination. Hallelujah! Termination is in resurrection.